day. And on the count of three, let's all clap and send our love and our creativity and our uh, compassion. This meeting is being recorded. To everybody in this group and all over the one, two, three. Okay, wonderful. So um, let me just start by saying a couple of things about the, um, the why of, of why, why do we need to start our own Ecoverse our presenters will also add in. Um, but for us, um, the Ecoversity's idea is um, uh, emerges out of this understanding that the kind of planetary and systemic crises that we're facing on the planet uh, around the world are due uh, to a crisis that is in the modern educated mind. The way that we have been, whether we call it the monoculture of the mind or the fragmented mind, the competitive mind, the scarcity mind. Uh, and, and that has really learned over the last uh, um, hundred or so years, the knowledge systems that we have adopted are actually part of the crisis that we're facing. And there's a need to reclaim and read those spaces for learning, other ways of knowing, other, other forms of wisdom and creativity. To actually, um, to actually deal with what's in front of us. And rather than waiting for the kind of uh, the conventional university system to change or to adapt, uh, we felt that it's important to start to create the models that we would like to see in the world. Um, so for me, Ecoversities is, is um, it's an invitation and a declaration. It's an invitation to reimagine, to remember, to reconnect, to um, really uh, bring in all kinds of people into a platform uh, where their diversity and their uh, resilience and their brilliance can also be seen. Um, and uh, we, all, we talk about, you know, um, the uh, idea and decolonization. One thing I like to talk about is this idea that you know, the people who control the definitions and the rule, uh, the, the definitions and the indicators, they control the rules of the game. Um, and so the idea is that can we start to redefine what university means to us in our different contexts? Um, and we have seen in, in India at least all kinds of amazing. Um, um, uh, frameworks, models emerging once we open up that definition. So we have like the farm versities, we have forest versities, river versities, jail, jail universities, travelers universities, slum universities, so all kinds of village versities. Um, so all kinds of things are possible, you know, like, so I, I, I like to say, you know, we have we're, we have a hundred different kinds of toothpaste, we can imagine, why only one kind of university? Uh, so that's kind of the invitation is to come into this process. And the, I, I also, as a um, Ecoversities, as a, a political and a spiritual declaration, uh, a, a declaration that, you know, that, uh, uh, we exist, we refuse to be defined by the, um, the frameworks of the capitalist industrial system. We can start to create our own frameworks and our own ways of uh, thinking and living the good life. Um, this is a little bit of the background. I, I mean, there's much more. I mean, I would go even to, you know, for me, my, the project that I had started with my, with, with people in Udaipur Swaraj University came out of very, very personal need also for my, who we had unschooled and, and were then thinking about what option for uh, higher education for her. Uh, and same thing, the later need for that also with Ecoversities that was she wanted to go and 
do things abroad? Where else could she go who shared a similar spirit? So there's, there's many different dimensions. So I would like to um, invite uh, first speaker for this evening, uh, uh, Victoria Haro from Mexico. She's the founder of UMA uh, and uh, she's a very, very dear friend. I have had the great privilege of actually visiting visiting both of uh, the speakers and their pro projects in, in Mexico and Britain. They're brilliant, brilliant places. Uh, both, both really touched my heart and they sparked my imagination. Uh, and I think that's the spirit of Ecoversity is the alliance is how can we really learn together with each other and, and uh, really support us to, to keep stretching our imaginations and our experiments. So, uh, Victoria, I would like to invite you to share about UMA, how you started it. What did you, what tips and advice do you have for people who want to start their own ecoversities from your experiences? Sorry, can I, sorry, Victoria. Thank you, Manish. Can I quickly remind that I'm translating simultaneously? So if, if you guys can speak yeah. just a bit okay. slow, slower, that helps. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Bianca. Sorry. Thank you, Manish. Um, Hello, everyone. Um, so, as Manish said, I uh, am part of the co-founding group of Universidad del Medio Ambiente, University of the Environment uh, in Mexico. This is a university two hours away from Mexico City in, in, uh, in the middle of the mountains, in a forest. And uh, we opened UMA in 2009. Um, so UMA is the first formal accredited alternative university uh, focused on sustainability in Latin America. So we started with this idea in 2005 and uh, we have, uh, you know, we were a group of people that were very interested in, in uh, sustainability and we thought that the idea of creating a university that was focused on sustainability was just was just sort of the first steps. Our view is that every university eventually should be focused on sustainability, no matter what you are, uh, you know, what the discipline is, no matter if it's medicine or law or, or business or whatever uh, is, is, uh, is, is a career, uh, it should have a sustainability view. That's, that's our view of the future. But by the beginning of this millennia, uh, that was certainly not the case. It's still not, not the case. And although there were several uh, uh, projects in Latin America already focused on higher education and sustainability, uh, none of them by the beginning of, of the 2000s uh, was a, a formal university. And we thought that in an ecosystem view, you need all sorts of different uh, uh, different proposals and a formal accredited university, as Manish said, in terms of trying to influence the system and how definitions and indicators are made was an, an important endeavor. So um, this is what we did. We, we, uh, so we were a group of, of social environmental activists. Uh, we realized, uh, oh, there's, I mean, we had in the national university, you could study uh, environmental engineering. I mean, there were some more technical and scientific views, but there was nothing in the humanities. Uh, and then we realized there was nothing in, in Latin America in terms of humanities focused towards sustainability, again, in a, in a formal way. So um, we made an analysis of what was, you know, what was kind of missing. How could we cooperate? And we saw, we thought that the three main um, um, uh, let's say uh, disciplines that that uh, could um, you know could be offered that were not being offered were such environmental business, environmental law, and sustainable architecture. So these structures of law, architecture, and business. So the economic part, the construction part, and the legal part, uh, from our view, being super important in terms of trying to um, cooperate with a new view in terms of this, these three systems. So we started a group of four people uh, and we got together and started developing an idea of how uh, uh, we could go by uh, doing a university like this. And uh, very, uh, and this is already 
a mix between what we did and what I think I would recommend, because what really made a big difference is that from the beginning, we started hosting conversations and inviting people and getting people interested in the idea and inviting people that already had developed other projects, educational projects, projects in sustainability to come uh, talk to us or we started traveling. Uh, uh, around Mexico to begin with, then Latin America, and then we even uh, visited some places around the world to go see for ourselves what uh, other people were doing. Uh, so for a couple of years, what we really did was attract energy, you know, like attract interest, attract energy, get clear on the ideas, get clear and more in a systems view of how can we cooperate? How, you know, what, what, uh, what can we learn from others? And after two years, uh, we had uh, uh, you know quite a, a bit of people interested, which also I mean of course makes a lot of difference. But we came down to one uh, basic decision, which is that we wanted to have a university that was a community of practice. That uh, this was the one thing we wanted to concentrate on, so that it was not theoretical, that it was not conceptual, that we could try to propose what would a university that was a learning by doing, hardcore learning by doing, uh, could look like, like a real community of practice, of practitioners coming together, practicing and learning from that. So that was one central idea we, we came to. And the second important idea is that since we wanted to learn by doing, we wanted to promote uh, people developing projects. And particularly, uh, we were interested in promoting the idea of projects, of course, that that generated social and environmental benefits, but also economic benefits. So this idea of uh, this new type of business that is not only uh, developing or focused on economic in economic benefits, but it's actually having as a core mission, the uh, production of, or, or the generation of, of um, social and environmental benefits. So since we wanted to promote this type of, of, of uh, uh, new view in businesses. Uh, and again, we thought this, we still think this should be the business as usual. So we should move towards this other idea of businesses that are, are having uh, social environmental benefits at, at its core. We thought, ah, so we should experiment with what we want to promote. So what if we make the university a business? you know, a social environmental business. Uh, so to experiment with this idea that generating social and environmental uh, um, benefits should not only be a, a work of philanthropy, it should be business as usual. So we wanted to do this experiment with the university itself as any other project, uh, social environmental project that we wanted to, uh, to promote. So that was, uh, you know, also a very important decision. Um, so we decided to start the university with investment, looking for investment. Of course, this was social environmental investment. So we were looking for investors that were not only looking for economic uh, uh, returns, but mainly for social and, envir and, and environmental returns. Uh, and that was really interesting. Um, so by 2007, it took us two years to come up with, with an idea, with a proposal, with a business proposal, uh, and of course, the most important with a clear purpose for the university, this idea of we would like to have a community of practice, uh, uh, bring uh, practitioners uh, together and do this crazy thing of uh, you know, trying to experiment with, with a social environmental, um, uh, with the university being in a social environmental project itself. Um, and we, so we went looking for people that were interested in, in putting their, uh, you know, putting money into this and we did find, but we did specifically also, we didn't want any kind of investor, even if they were interested in, 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 uh, uh, social and environmental, uh, benefits. We were also interested in, um, but we actually looked for young, uh, Mexican in, in this case, um, entrepreneurs that were already uh, having social environmental projects. We wanted to have a community of practice within ourselves that we were all having social environmental projects and that we were all trying to figure out what is this other way 
uh, of of uh, of uh, participating in the in the economy with different proposals. And when we found three three persons that were making this type of experiment, so it was great to get together and just have this this seed of. Uh, a group of people with different uh, projects, just getting together to do this project of, of the university. And uh, from that, uh, and actually we didn't need uh, a lot of money neither, but you know, we did need it to, you know, to get a credit, we need to get some land and build and uh, you know, get a, a co-design group to, to produce university. And I wouldn't say by the way, that this is the only way or the best way. Uh, to do it, it's just the way that 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 we chose. So I wouldn't. Uh, I actually really believe that diversity is very important. So I believe that we should, as Manish was saying, have a, a wide range of different types of universities and different ways of developing. And this is what is really rich: the the diversity of processes and the diversity of purposes. So I'm just sharing the the one experiment we chose with these two characteristics community of practice and uh social environmental project as a university itself so what the second part is the design of of uh of the learning process uh, we got together a group of 45 people we made a co-design group uh, of 45 people coming that came from that prior process where we were having conversations. And so we identified, you know, who were the people that had more energy, that had ideas that were very inspiring for us. And uh, we, we invited them for a full year of, of co-designing the, the university. And then we had decided already to have start with these three areas, uh, architecture, law, and uh, business. Uh, so we, this part, the design part, of course, is the most fun. It was amazing, you know, for a full year, uh, we were getting together every uh, four weeks uh, for workshops of three days, uh, uh, every five weeks, actually, you know, so we, we would, you know, get together, have conversations, go away, uh, do some work. We uh, did have some funds too. Um, be able to sustain financially or economically this this co-design process, uh, but uh, it, 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 you, people that were participating uh, would have to have the same idea of wanting to participate in, uh, you know, socially, environmentally, and economically because the funds were <laughs> not not you know the type of you know like you were there like, as a consultant they were not very high, uh, but they were but there were some funds, um, so the conversation was incredible i think that year has been one of the years that i've learned most in my life it was like discovering all these new ideas we, it was also conflictive you know we were all very invested in this idea of oh, yes let's you know create this university it's the first formal university in latin america we were all really uh, uh having a lot of energy for this so we also you know were fighting over uh, uh again as manish said definitions and indicators uh what we meant by this what we meant by that what was uh, you know what was we wanted diversity, but some people thought, oh, that's too much diversity. No, 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 no. You know, we have to concentrate on this type of view or that type of view. So, you know, this pull, pulling around, which where do you limit your diversity of, of, of uh, definitions and views is really interesting. And there were some really passionate fights <laughs> around some uh, around concepts. And of course, this passionate uh, uh, dialogues, I would say, not fights, is, is where the real learning is. Uh, sometimes in a very surprising way, like you start having a, a conflictive dialogues about things that you wouldn't even think that, you know, were, were going to be a, a conflict and they, and, and they, and they, and they are. So uh, my, my, my main partner, I mean, we were quite young. Uh, um, I mean, what were we? Um, this was 2007. I mean, maybe we were 30 something. Uh, so of course we were also having uh, uh, mentors, you know, that had more experience than us. And, uh, but at the end it was uh, our project, we were leading it. So we had to take decisions, you know, when suddenly there were uh, conflicts that seemed um, unresolvable. Uh, okay, so it seems we have to choose if we want to go this way or that way. So, you know, those moments are, are beautiful in terms of defining where, where you know, what is your, your direction. So, uh, that's you know kind of this idea of, of uh, 
having your partners be a community of practice. I really loved that. I thought that was an incredible seed. Having a, a, a co-design, a real co-design process. And these people became the teachers, the original, you know, the, 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 the first teachers of the university. So that was another community of practice. So then when we established this idea of a university as a community of practice, we already had several years doing that. And before we, we uh, went and offered the, the degrees we, we had designed, uh, we um, had a couple of years of prototyping. So we did programs where we just invited um, people uh, in Mexico, Latin America that were developing social environmental projects to come and learn together. So we started with communities of practice to begin with, uh, to learn from them, what are their needs? What are they doing? Uh, what are they learning? What are their indicators, et cetera? So we, we for, for, this was the first decision we took as a co-design team. Let's design a yearly program and invite people to form communities of practice with a very loose structure, not, not a degree really, just a year of, you know, and that we were inviting people. So, so this is the way we learned what was uh, uh, actually needed. We designed these degrees, went to the um, educational authorities. Uh, they, of course, found it completely strange what we wanted to do. So it was a super interesting conversation. It took us a year of having conversations with the authorities and convincing them that it was worth having a different university, you know, a different experiment. And we did it. Uh, it, this was beautiful, you know. This was really our intention: oh, opening this, 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 this uh, uh, process in 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 the um, in the formal educational system. Um, and so we opened the, the degrees, uh, in sort of uh, already the, the, the curricular programs in 2011. So we've been going on uh, from there. Um, we have now seven uh, master's degrees, uh, one bachelor degree and three specialities. That's where we are right now. And um, to finish this, this first part, I would say that, uh, I mean, we started in 2011 and only we've been for two years uh, economically sustainable. So it, it took us almost uh, nine years of, of having to use still uh, uh, investment and having to look for more investment to you know uh, continue growing, but it's been a real pleasure <laughs> for two years to, uh, to to be economically sustainable. And we do have this agreement with our uh, our investors that we're going to invest. The, you know any profits coming out are going to be reinvested. So in the end, we ended up with kind of the same. Uh, sort of scheme that you would have in a in a uh, in a nonprofit where profits are you know simply reinvested, uh, but still it's 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 there's 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 an interest and a, and a focus on being economically sustainable and I'm just putting a little bit of emphasis on it on this because I mean my time is up so of course I could speak a lot of the educational process and the you know the social and the environmental aspect of it but I know that if you're thinking on starting an university the economic part is is a, is a huge question so that's why I'm just putting a little bit more of, of emphasis in that and offering our experience. That's that Manish. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Victoria. Fantastic. Uh, there's some questions that are coming in there. So uh, why don't you take some time to read those and um, we'll let we'll listen to Her Hermes and then uh, uh, then we will come back to you. So I want to welcome uh, my elder brother Hermes from Brazil. Um, runs a fantastic project called uh, NUA and um, is, a, is one of the most inspiring personal stories that I've ever heard of in my life. He's uh, um, really a, a, one, of a, one of the, I think, most powerful leaders in Brazil uh, um, and um, would like to welcome him to share about his project and, and Universidad. Uh, so, and I think Bianca is also part of uh, the Ecoversities in Brazil, and she's going to help uh, translate. So, welcome, Hermes and Bianca. 
Bem-vindo, Hermes, deixa eu só te traduzir porque eu não estava no outro lugar, ele falou que você vem do Brasil, que você é uma das pessoas mais inspiradoras que ele conhece e que você vai compartilhar uh, dessa experiência sua aqui no Brasil. Então você pode falar e eu traduzo. So just so everybody to know, he, he's going to speak, and then after I will translate. And if, if there are any problems, just let us know. Bom dia a todos. Muito bom estar aqui nessa, nessa roda de conversa tão inspiradora. Estou em São Paulo, no Brasil. E, e a nossa história começa muito numa inquietação. É, eu acredito, eu aprendi nesses 20 anos que a inquietação ela é, ela é muito boa porque ela gera propósito. E quando nasce o propósito, é, tudo que é necessário para esse propósito, todos os recursos já estão dentro desse propósito. E Comecei, a nossa história começa em 2020. Hermes, deixa, deixa eu só traduzir essa parte. Tá. É, so he says, uh, good morning, uh, everybody. It's, it's really good to be here today in this very inspiring circle of sharing. Um, I'm from São Paulo, Brazil. And my story starts with a inquietude, with, with um, Jesus, I forgot, like something that was making him not quiet, like, you know, something that was bothering him somehow. And these 20 years that he's been learning um, uh, showed him that this kind of, you know, little voice inside that's saying that something is wrong uh, is what gives us purpose. And then when something is born out of purpose, all the resources and everything that you need will be born with it. For you. É... Então, nossa história começa... Desculpa, eu acho que eu vou trazer, como sempre, muito, muito problema para a minha amiga Bianca na tradução. <risos> Com as minhas palavras da roça campesina. É... O nosso projeto, ele nasce numa inquietação em 2000. Eu recém saído do presídio, onde cumpri 10 anos de pena, por conta de um plano de governo. E quando eu saio do presídio, ninguém me dá emprego, ninguém me dá trabalho. E eu chego numa comunidade que, que as pessoas sobreviviam de, de materiais de um lixão. Deixa eu ir, Hermes, senão, senão fica longo. Uh, so he was just um, making a little joke because I always translate for him and he uses word that I find very hard to translate, but I'm getting very good at it and I'll get better. But it's a shame that you cannot hear his own words. Anyway, so he says that, um, so he's, uh, he, he, his project starts in 2000 when he was just out of jail where he spent 10 years um, due to a government plan. And when he was out of jail, he couldn't find work and found himself in a community where people uh, were living or relied on um, garbage, on kind of a landfill um, object to make their living. Foi. Era uma comunidade a segunda mais violenta do Brasil, segundo a ONU. E, e o maior recurso que eu tinha para começar esse trabalho sem saber nada, porque eu só tinha um coração querendo mudar tanto a minha história como a história daquela comunidade, é, eu fui aprendendo a importância de, de juntar a diversidade, de trazer outras pessoas inconformadas com aquela circunstância. Deixa eu ir, então, 
Então, uh, sorry. Um, so he was saying that this community that he was living in was the second most violent in Brazil. Um, it was a UN indicator at the time. And uh, the biggest or, or yeah, the biggest resource he had at the time uh, was my heart, my my story, my journey, my history, and the community's history. And I learned that the important thing is really to, 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 to get people together, to really allow diversity to be together and, and rely on, on a, a variety of people that bring different aspects to, to the group. Foi. E ali nasce uma escola no lixão através da ARC e foram juntando outros atores sociais da comunidade e começamos a fazer é, atividades dentro, literalmente dentro do lixão. E, e utilizando materiais que vinham no lixão, que vinha pra, porque não tínhamos recurso para nada. Então, começa essa escola com a reutilização de materiais, com a reciclagem. So, this, this project, this university school, starts in the landfill uh, through art activities. And then other actors and people uh, start to come to, to offer activities. Um, but they really start utilizing materials that came from the landfill, the garbage that was there, uh, because they didn't have resources. So their resource was to actually recycle and reutilize what was around them. Foi. Segundo passo que tivemos, estamos numa comunidade de 40 mil pessoas. É, e a partir desse momento... É, fazer arte, compartilhar o, o seu dia a dia, mesmo naquela circunstância do lixão, é, o segundo passo foi buscar fazer um coletivo das lideranças, das, das pessoas que tinham influência de opinião sobre pessoas na comunidade. So... They, the, the community was at, had at a point 40,000 people. And it was this, this process of really allowing, you know, doing art in a, in a context uh, of sharing the day-to-day -day in the landfill. And then the second step that they took was really to create a collective of leaders, of leaders of people that had influence within the community. Foi. E... Esse coletivo existe até hoje e é o que pressiona o poder público a olhar para essa comunidade. So this uh, collective, this group of people exists until today and it's them that are really in this dialogue and pressure with the government, with the public authorities to make sure they are looking at the community. Em 2019, com, acho que foi 2019, 2018, com a vinda do Maniche é, para o Brasil, é, eu não sei nem explicar como, mas a gente foi conhecendo tanta gente, como a Gisele, é, Bianca, Claudinho e outras pessoas do Brasil e fora do Brasil, e, e isso me trouxe uma uma alegria de, de olhar para o que eu estava fazendo e que essa comunidade estava recebendo e fazendo junto. E hoje é, ampliou muito o, a atuação nossa nessa comunidade, porque a gente ampliou da escola do lixão Agora criamos a escola debaixo da ponte para Bianca. So, um, in 2008, uh, no, sorry, 2018, uh, when Manish came to Brazil, 
um, he says, I don't even know how to explain properly, but it, it just, we started to uh, meet and know so many people inside and outside of the country, Gisele, Claudinho, and, and that brought uh, me such joy to be able to look at what I was doing and what us in the community was doing with different eyes. And today what we saw was a massive expansion of our, of what we do. Uh, so from this kind of landfill school, now we have what, we, what, what he calls the university under the bridge. E os encontros que foram acontecendo, como o encontro no México, que eu participei, encontro na Índia, é, o encontro com todas essas pessoas tem sido muito libertador e muito inspirador. E quando venho, compartilho isso na comunidade, e a comunidade está se tornando uma comunidade inspiradora. So, and all these meetings that are happening within the Echo Versus Alliance in Mexico, when we went on a learning journey to India, all this has been, um, that has been creating a lot of free, freedom and inspiration and the possibility of sharing that within the community has been inspired us a lot. So, é, então, agora mais recente, a gente tem Estamos implantando a Unidiversidade da Quebrada. Ou, ou seja, unir a diversidade num propósito. E esse núcleo, e a gente está chamando até de campus de, de União de Vila Nova. So more recently, uh, we have the Unidiversity, Unidiversidade das Quebradas. Just to explain, Quebradas is a, like a, a, a slang way, a way of saying uh, the periphery or slum areas. So, uh, and, and the name is the Unidiversity of the Quebradas. And it's this idea of really bringing together, of unifying diversity. Uh, with one purpose, and uh, and we started this kind of nucleus or this small uh, place that now we are actually calling as a campus, like the first campus of the uni of the uni diversity of the quebradas. E a uni diversidade da quebrada, ela valoriza a inteligência da favela, a intergeracionalidade. Esse é o nosso princípio educativo, onde os mais jovens aprendem com os avós e os avós aprendem também com os mais novos. So the Universidade das Quebradas values the intelligence of of the slum and the and and intergenerational the intergenerational uh, sharing. So this is one of their um, educational principles that the grandmothers and grandfathers have shared with the, the, with the youth and also what the youth shares with the grandparents. Foi. É... A Unidiversidade, é... nesse lugar também estamos aprendendo que dentro da escassez da favela também existe uma abundância e ela é muito regada pela generosidade das pessoas que lá estão. And what we are learning in this place is that inside the shanty town that is seen as a place of of lacking of you know of of lack of um, there is a lot of abundance. And the abundance come, comes from the generosity of the people. Para terminar, eu só queria falar que nós, nesse, nesse, nesse tempo de existência, de, de atuação nessa comunidade, a gente aprendeu a falar e desenvolver uma educação desenrolada. Ixi, que atrapalhei você agora, né? I love this. This is challenging for me. 
Um, so what he's saying is that in this time of existence, they, they've been learning and developing what in Portuguese is des, de, uh, education desenrolada, which is a Brazilian term of like making things happen is to unravel. The actual translation is to unravel. But when you have an issue, you know, whatever bureaucratic issue and, and you need to sort it out to say us, you need to desenrolar isso. So what he's saying is that we are learning to have this unraveling education. Consegui, hein, Hermes? Então, <laughs> uh... A unidiversidade, ela tem cinco núcleos, que é o que, e não tem, esses núcleos, eles são integrados, e interagem entre si. Um núcleo de cultura e arte, um núcleo de gastronomia e nutrição, um núcleo de ecologia e meio ambiente, um núcleo de comunicação comunitária e um núcleo de sustentabilidade financeira, que a gente está falando também de, de desnegócio. A gente tem... Atrai... Porque quando a gente fala de negócio, os nossos jovens se assustam, porque, primeira coisa, eles não têm capital. Quando a gente fala de desnegócio, é, o capital inicial que nós precisamos ter é a criatividade. E, e a partir daí, é, é, é o maior capital que podemos ter, é a criatividade. Então, entendemos que esses cinco núcleos, é, dentro dessa proposta, dessa comunidade, é o que vai trazer e promover sustentabilidade para a comunidade como um todo. Um, so within uh, the universidade, uh, they have five uh, areas or five nucleus uh, that are integrated and and have you know um, um, connection between one another. And the first one is culture and art. The second one is gastronomy and nutrition. The third is ecology and the environment. The third, um, community communication or communitarian communication. And the fifth is uh, financial sustainability. And within the financial sustainability, they talk of kind of unbusiness. Because when you talk about businesses within the community and the youth get a bit scared because they don't have initial capital, they don't have money to put into it. Um, but when you talk about own businesses, the, 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 main, the main capital you need is creativity and that they have. And, and from that creativity, they can start. Um, so these uh, five areas um, with, within, you know, within this uh, purpose, within this kind of collective purpose of the Uniquebradas is what we think will bring sustainability for the community as a whole. Foi. Meu tempo já foi. And that's it. <laughs> he's saying, I think my time is over. <laughs> Hermes, vou te ligar no WhatsApp de novo. Great. Thank you so much, Hermes and Bianca. Wonderful. Um, really amazing. And, you know, I remember when I had gone to Brazil and... Uh, Really, uh, there was a, um, uh, a map somebody was showing me of, of the you know university, and then this is the favelas. And I said the real favela, the favelas are the real university. The other one is a fake one. So it's really beautiful to see this dream uh, unfolding in in Brazil. Um, and so I will. Uh, I think we have about 10, 15 minutes left. Um, I am just wondering, um, uh, there's some questions I know that are emerging. I can say a few things about uh, Swaraj University and then maybe we'll have a few minutes to listen to Victoria and Hermes with any questions you have. So I just wanted to say a few things um, which were very critical. We started a Swaraj University in 2011. The, uh, <clears throat> entire experiment has been an experiment
environment of gift culture and different a uh, few different examples so um uh, we have a campus but that campus when we started to talk about swaraj university with people uh, there was an uncle who had a campus em lying empty and he decided to gift us he offered to gift us the use of the campus uh, and uh, uh, so we we had a campus to start with um, and today we have more than 25 campuses lots of friends around india uh, and around the world uh, have said whenever you would like to use our campus please come and use it so we've tried to stay away from an ownership model where we don't own anything and really are trying to operate in the gift culture um, the second thing is we have more than a thousand faculty so all of these people are people who are you know um, rain artisans farmers uh, healers uh, um, community builders architects um, community media people host you know uh, uh, um, artists and as well as people who have you know more formal degrees as well but and all of these people, you know, have been uh, collaborating with us also in the spirit of the gift culture. Um, we have one campaign, which I wanted to show, share about, which is called Healing Ourselves from the Diploma Disease. So we have no, uh, we don't issue any degrees or diplomas. And actually what we have done is made a, a partnership with more than, uh, I think almost 1500, organizations, companies, uh, NGOs to say that whenever uh, can can our people come with their portfolios and work with you, even if they don't have a degree. So we've had a great, great interest and success in trying to hack the degree system. Um, the uh, I think what's one one um, uh, the, the core of our program is built on uh, the idea of unlearning. So much of what we've been taught uh, and uh, in terms of both thinking about who we are, what is our purpose on this earth, what are we here to do together? Uh, most of that, uh, whatever the system has taught us, we need to unlearn and then we, uh, uh, we can start to create a new. So we have a lot of different activities and programs around processes around unlearning. Um, the, the two things of advice that I have, um, three pieces of a little advice is one is that um, the naming of the uh, of your project is, is the start of something beautiful and magical. And when we started this, we were very, um, uh, there's a lot of sensitivity in India that you know, all of these ideas should not be Western input, new kinds of Western impositions, Western imperialism. So we started Swaraj. Swaraj means uh, harmony of the self, and it came out of the Indian freedom struggle. Gandhi, Tagore, many other freedom fighters used this word Swaraj. And there was a very famous book by Gandhi called Hind Swaraj. So it's an extension of that. And we say that our university is actually 5,000 years old. Uh, there's a story of a boy named Eklavya from the Mahabharat, and he's the first documented self-designed learner. Uh, and we say he was our first vice chancellor. So the idea is to pick a name that helps to re root your project into into a cultural context. There's uh, and and gets inspires people, but also makes them feel like this is something that is our own that we can connect to. Uh, and the other suggestion I had is, um, you know, so there's different approaches. Uh, you know, one can plan, uh, uh, one one can plan, one cannot plan. But we, Victoria also mentioned, but we believe a lot in prototyping. So hopefully in the next session on Sunday, we will uh, help you start. Uh, so let's version 1.0 of your ecoversities we're hoping to create with you on Sunday. And my so my, my experience is not to spend too much time planning, but to start it and keep uh, adapting and being resilient and responsive to what's, what's, what are the needs of in the community that you are engaging with. Um, and the third thing is, I think um, we have an event every year called the Learning Societies Unconference, which around 
more than I think 1,200 people uh, attend, and they're people from all over all over the country, all different kinds of work. They're doing amazing things, what we call a livelihoods, um, and they come with their family families and they spend a week together. And this has been really critical in terms of us to um, uh, build a sense of community, a larger community in the country, a uh, larger set of relationships for Swaraj. Lots of doors get open because of the relationships that get built uh, during the Learning Societies and Conference. So this kind of gathering where you can bring lots of different people who are uh, doing amazing work and uh, we want to have deep associations with uh, together is um, really, um, I think, critical for the success of any ecoversity. And the last thing I said is that, you know, again, this is an option. These are decision points, but we chose to be 100% illegal. So you're not allowed to use the word university in the government uh, in, the, in, in India without the government's approval. So we are a kind of, this is a kind of civil disobedience, act of civil disobedience, where we don't want to have any kind of legal permission. So again, these are all choices that everyone has to make. And I'm just, we're just trying to put them in front of you. As Victoria said so beautifully, the diversity and this engagement, I think the, the, the experiment of ecoversities is, can we create a deep space of dialogue and love and co-creation with so much diversity uh, that is really what's inspiring to me. So I'll just end it there. And uh, I wanted to share one um, little slide. Let me figure out. But if there's like, any questions, why don't people just uh, tap in and um, um, uh, for Victoria or for Hermes before we go. Uh, and I will just share one slide I wanted to gift you all before we go, we wrap up today. So any questions, you can just... Um, uh, Victoria, you can respond to what you read also, and then yeah. maybe just that's a better way to do it. Thank okay. you. Okay, great. Thank you, Manish. Yeah, I already read the question, so I'll, I'll answer quickly. Uh, well, as, as you can see, these are three very different processes uh, with three very different proposals. So I think our hope is that maybe we inspire you that actually any path is possible. As Hermes said, I think I also believe that once your purpose is is uh, is clear then th that path opens and these are three very different economic uh experiments you, you've just heard um uh, answering one question there uh, in Uma, what we do for the tuition is that we have a wide range so we have people paying a hundred percent of the tuition and we have people paying zero so it's actually uh pay what you can sort of thing so we have this this uh, scholarships that go from a hundred percent to to non-scholarship and so this is what makes the uh, uh, economic diversity viable so we part of our purpose is to have a uh um a, a, you know, wide range of economic diversity uh, within the, the learners. And this is the way we, we are achieving it. And this is a main focus of our experiment that uh, the, the learning uh, context is a context where we're also learning how can we break with this idea of classes uh, and how can we weave uh, uh, different um, so-called classes together uh, because once you're learning, it really doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> uh, so, so that's the way that that was. So that was one question: how we were going around that. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe a question for Hermes, and then I'll go back to another another question. Uh, the, the other last thing I would say is that our principle, and that would be my main uh, recommendation, is also a Gandhi uh, principle, which is the means are the ends. So just be, as a university, whatever you want to promote. Uh, just, you know, this, this complete uh, search exploration of congruency, I, I think, is very important in order to learn what you want to uh, go there and try to, let's say, teach. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Uh, Hermes, would you like to add anything from the questions? Bianca there, I, I saw one question only, and then if there's more, um, I just, I didn't read it because I was translating. I'm going to translate. Um, uh, Ansa asked a question, so I'm going to translate that. Hermes, é, okay. uma, das, uma das perguntas que eu vi foi, é, você poderia elaborar no que, que é esse desnegócio?
So he's going to talk about the how could you what elaborate on the unbusiness. Uh, in in 2019, tivemos. Eu gosto de falar de, de cinco pilares que eu entendo que é muito importante para 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 fazer qualquer coisa. São esses cinco pilares aqui. Revelação ou intuição. Inspiração, ativação para transformação. Em 2018, nós fizemos um trabalho com 18 jovens com problema, com conflito com a lei. Então, eles não tinham dinheiro para começar nada. E aí, a... a, a a única é, oportunidade que se apresentava era voltar a delinquir. E, e nós pensamos em criar uma aceleradora, não sei do que, de boas ideias. E começamos a nos reunir para pensar em boas ideias, jovens com 17, 18 anos. Hoje, esses Espera aí, espera aí, Hermes, deixa isso, não sei. So, what he... Mostra sua camiseta que me ajuda. Uh, so, what he's saying is that he likes to think about these five pillars, which um, it's... Uh, ação that you see in the, in, in the right-hand side is action. So, it's about uh, revelation, so re re to revelate in action, activation, to be active... In, uh, inspiration, pregação, it's um, Comunicação. Uh, to, to communicate and to transform. So in 2018, they started to work with 18 youth that had problems with the law and they didn't have any money. So the only opportunity they had um, was, was really uh, to, to think about a incubator of good ideas and, and then to start to think from there. Foi. E quando fazemos o que acreditamos, eu acho que a gente é, transmite o nosso coração para as outras pessoas. E foi e isso. When we do, when we do what we believe, we, we transmit our hearts and our energy to, to others. E esses jovens captaram essa, é, esse meu desejo de mudança e começaram a desejar também pela mudança. So this, um, uh, the youth really um, um, understood my desire of change and they themselves started to want to change. E hoje, 18 deles estão com seu próprio negócio. Salão de beleza, é, DJ, MCs, é, trabalham com venda de, de roupa, tem suas lojinhas. So today, de água no farol. So today, um, all these 18 youth have their own businesses. Some of them have beauty salons, they are DJs, they are MCs, they sell, they sell clothes or they sell uh, water um, in the street. This negócio começa com o que eu tenho. Não espero chegar a algo para mim começar. E o desnegócio também não tem o concorrente. Eu só tenho parceiros. So the unbusiness starts with what we have. It doesn't wait for something to be given or to arrive to us. And in an unbusiness, we don't have competitors. We just have partners. E, e precisa estar alinhado que é a, a para mim é a maior religião é que esteja tenha compromisso com o seu semelhante com o social e tenha compromisso com o meio ambiente e que basicamente possa se sustentar não visando só o lucro mas o bem estar geral And a core of what he believes has to do with being aligned. He said, it's, a, it's like a religion to me. You have to have a social commitment. 
a commitment to the environment and you have to think about sustainability in terms of the benefits to all. What is your mic? No. I think that's it. Okay, thank you. So I think we'll be here for another um, uh, maybe 10 minutes maximum. If you can stay on everyone, that would be great. Those who have to go, um, we understand. Um, and we hope you can join us on Sunday where we will uh, actually create your own ecoversity uh, in the next session. Uh, and it's a guarantee you'll have an ecoversity by the end of the next session to try out your first prototype. Um, and I just wanted to add one thing about the financial one. I think it's critical for, I think all three of these projects and, and throughout the ecoversities, this is a very deep concern, is the kind of student debt that um, uh, the higher education puts people into. Um, uh, so uh, I think all of us are committed not to create a new system of bonded labor. Uh, and in, at least in the Swaraj case, we have an ancient tradition where we don't, um, in the traditional guru disciple um, um, practice uh, and agreement, uh, there was no money charged for the learning process. So that's been a core principle of ours. Um, and if, um, uh, you know, there are of course some costs which people can contribute to for food and stay, but if they don't, uh, we ask them um, when you, if you start earning some money in the future, please don't pay us back, um, but pay it forward and help somebody else to um, join an ecoversity. Uh, so that's kind of the principle we're operating on. Um, and uh, I wanted to just share two quick slides as a little gift for you all as we wrap up the session. So Andrea, can you put, put on the, the slide on uh, uh, some basics for starting up your own ecoversity? Great, thank you. So this is um, uh, some slides that we distilled from um, our own experiences in Swaraj, as well as many other um, projects in India and around the world, and as a way to get to the first prototype um, for starting your project. Um, and I think that, uh, so the first is a char choose a powerful name. The second is get at least five friends together who want to create an ecoversity, then find 10 inspiring um, mentors um, in your own community uh, and frame three action research questions. Uh, you saw that um, um, Hermes had frame, framed five of their uh, areas and um, uh, Victoria had framed sustainability as the core and questions around that. Then find a convenient meeting space. So it could be a campus, could be, uh, it could be under a bridge, it could be in a cafe, it could be in a library, it could be in a farm. Find a, find a space that really, or a forest um, that uh, you can start to build a rhythm around meeting up at. And uh, find three well-respected elders to uh, hold the hold the um, the energy for your ecoversity. So this is a little tip uh, on how to start. Um, and the other slide is what I wanted to share from Swaraj, which was uh, these are um, some key elements of self-designed learning. Which when we're designing our programs, we keep in mind. So one is questions that matter. Um, second is peer-to-peer -peer learning, and that's where a lot of the juice happens for us. Third is uh, learning journeys uh, you can plan out. Fourth is um, um, uh, fourth is apprenticeships and mentorships. The fifth is to create unlearning challenges, and the five, fifth, sixth is to give space for doing nothing, even and lots of things. Our experiences have told us that even when people are doing nothing, there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, and 
in India, we call that meditation usually. <laughs> but uh, so let us, uh, I just wanted to share that with everyone. And these slides will put out for you guys if you want to use them uh, in your work or refer to them, you're most welcome to. Uh, one other big aspect, I think, of the ecoversities, which I'm quite excited about, is we talk a lot about copyleft um, and uh, as part of the, the knowledge movement that we are trying to build together. So um, great. I think um, any last words, Victoria or Hermes, before we wrap up? One minute each. What I, I would just uh, say that uh, an invitation to an inspiration to, to make an ecoversity is also an invitation to um, find new ways of doing things, new ways of what the economy means, what the money means, what owning means, what non-owning means. Uh, so it's it's this idea of the means are the ends, this idea that the, the, the design itself of the ecoversity is already exploring all these ideas that, that you want to put uh, or, or that you want to propose in the world. It's fabulous, it's, it's an incredible adventure. And that's why I really believe that, that what is valuable is to have a, 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 an ecosystem of, of uh, ecoversities uh, with very different experiments, very different action research questions, very different models. Uh, and uh, we shouldn't be afraid of, of money. The, the, the thing is, what does it mean? Is it energy? Is it power? Is it, is it uh, slavery? Is it uh, an exchange of talents? Uh, can we or can we not um, resignify money? That is, for example, one question we are holding. And uh, the exploration we've done at UMA in 12 years in terms of still using money, but in a, in a sort of in a gift economy structure has been super interesting. So uh, I think that the resignificance of, of a lot of ideas, including money, is an opportunity for ecoversities. Thank you. Thank you. Last words, um, Hermes. And um, as we're wrapping up and listening to Hermes, I invite people to also share any any uh, um, any uh, takeaways or things that touched you during the session today. Uh, it would be great to hear from from people in the chat box. Maybe we can listen to a couple of people before, right after Hermes. Yes, Hermes. Last words, one minute. Uh, uh, I think that all this that we are living in this network is a divine expression. It's where you align the love é, porque Deus, o Eterno, ele escolheu ser amado no nosso próximo. Você alinha o cuidado com a mãe e a terra. E, e as nossas ações, independente de que lugar que elas estejam sendo realizadas, o tamanho que esteja sendo feito, não interessa o número de pessoas que está sendo atingidas ou afetada ou englobada, incluídas nesse processo. O importante que eu vejo é que o que nós estamos fazendo é a partir da nossa família, e para uma família estendida, que é as comunidades, e que afeta toda a família global. É... É um reimaginar, mas também é um regenerar da confiança. Da confiança em Deus, da confiança no próximo, da confiança na vida. Gratidão. So, what we are living within the Alliance is a divine expression uh, when you align love because God, the eternal, um, uh, decided to be loved in the other. So we, 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 we love and take care of our mother, the earth. And um, 
this is where um, and and in, in and independently on on how big or where our actions are, how many people are involved or affected by it, what we are doing is extending ourselves to our family, the community, and then and, and then affecting this community or influencing this community, and then through this community to the bigger community. Uh, kind of the global family. And this is a way for us to reimagine or regenerate the trust, the trust we have in the divine, in God, the trust we have in one another, and the trust we have in life. Um, gratitude. Yes. And Bianca, anything from you? Thank you for translating. I'm just a vessel of the divine words of this wonderful <laughs> human being <laughs> yes any but you're in also involved in this project in brazil so do you want to share any one minute from your side advice i think i think the beauty i think it's so beautiful that the three of you talked about diversity and i guess i think this is this is what i'm learning and unlearning a lot it's like there's various ways of doing things and opening to the sacred and to the emergent and allowing what happens that makes sense within a territory and within the people that are the sparks within it. I guess this is what you should do. You should do something that inspires you, that mobilizes you, that makes you wake up at night, at day, at any time, and that you see um, the good living as we talked in, in Latin America, the good living around you. Um, and just giggle a lot, right, Manish? I think this is the other thing. Just laugh. If you're not having fun, you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> yes. Thank you for reminding us. I think that's the, the secret sauce of the ecoversities is the playfulness that we have between all of us. So thank you for, for bringing that in, Bianca. Um, great. Uh, we can listen to one or two people's if they want to share anything they're feeling before we close today. I'm, I'm sorry we didn't have more time for that, um, but at least two, three people we can listen quick, short. If you want to sh share anything you're taking away from the call today, you can come online and share with us. Don't be shy. In any case, Manish, I just want to say something about what Bianca said about the diversity. This yes. idea of really being open to diversity in the sense of different ways of doing things, for me, is crucial to break with this authoritarian view or totalitarian view that there is only one way or the best way or that we all should, you know, be in a bike and, and, and be vegetarians uh, to be good people. Well, maybe yes, maybe not. So the opening to diversity is, is, uh, is not easy. It's, it's challenging. It sounds uh, uh, more romantic than it is in practice. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. That's a whole other session to share all the the challenges of working with the diversity and ecoversity, but uh, that's yes. Uh, anybody who would like to share, one or two people, anything that you're that's touched you or made you think something in this call, this session today? Amit, <laughs> I'll ask my friend Amit. You want to share anything? <clears throat> I feel like I'm being cold called. <laughs> <laughs> we met last time Amit and I met was like some 30, 25 years ago. So I'm seeing him after 25 years, which is great. Yeah, I mean, you know, the work that you're doing is so inspiring and so many different uh, ways that you're having to attack the system, right? Like even having something that's diverse results in a series of consequential things that are challenging. Um, and so it's like living on the edge. It seems like a constant reality for reinvention. Is that how you're experiencing it? Yeah, for I sure. experience it as aliveness, <laughs> being alive every day. <laughs> Great. Um, maybe Gabriella, do you want to say anything? Thank you, Amit. Gabriella, yes, thank you. Joe. 
Yes. Thank you, Manish. Uh, I, I, I feel so grateful for being here. Uh, and we probably are healing the world right now and doing the, the and reimagining, co creating the new world. Uh, so I just will put a, a link in the chat because uh, I'm part of uh, uh, a group, international group. We are uh, doing a job about re economy, re economy uh, in Brazil, re economy in New York. Okay. And I think this, the re significant, the, the business as usual is, is the thing most important to think. And I needed to, do, to know more. Uh, and maybe if I can contact Victoria and Manish and how the, the project plan, business project plan about the, the ecoverses in India and Mexico. Uh, and Emis, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm close here to Gisele and, and I can know more, but I needed to, to share more about these specific things if I have, if I can contact you. Yes, of course. Of course. Thank you. Yes, Gabriella. We we can maybe Victoria and Hermes, Bianca, you can put your emails also in the in the link. Vivian, do you want to share something? Yeah, I just typed in the chat. I think it's really awesome that um there are these alternatives because I think many people are yearning and really wanting to find different ways, but really just don't know how and feel like they're just trapped in the existing system. So yeah, I'm just really excited to hear all the amazing work that you are doing and to be here with everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Vivian. Um, anyone else? Aisa, Aisa, Delaney. Hey. Yeah, I can I'm step in. Um, yeah, also yes. from Sweden, yeah. And my cat, <laughs> very, very, very inspired. Uh, thanks a lot. I'm, I'm new to this, uh, to your group, your uh, bunch, <laughs> but I've been traveling so closely to you in my heart and in my doings for the last 30 years. And I've been sort of battered and bruised in this, because as you're saying, it can be difficult to try. I have one foot in, in university, I'm a drama teacher there, but I have two feet outside and I've been involved in all sorts of projects, so much related to what you're up to. and be like a boxer dog, I feel, that I've been running into those so inspired and wanting to do and and alone, even though I've worked with, with uh, communities, but it's been fairly much my ideas and my, it, I've started things. And now I feel so blessed and relaxed that I'm, I'm in a, like a huge safety net amongst all this rich, foundations and fountains of experience and who thank you friends thank you thank you so we, we i'm getting uh messages from ansa that we have to go soon so let, let me quickly give it one or two more last people and john paul yes thank you very much manash and uh, i really want to appreciate uh all these experiences a new a new kind of uh, life that I've actually entered in the presentation for Victoria, and then for Anish, um, Anish and then, and uh, I want to appreciate also Blanca for the doing the translation. It's actually a new thing that uh, it's not that if you go to university is when you should start. I mean, you no, know, doing something. You can start from. You can have any level of. Uh, you, you as a human being, you can be able to do something. That's why uh, we are born and God gave us uh, that we need to work. We need to work for our own benefit and also for the other people that are actually not uh, the less privileged people. So I really want to thank, uh, um, uh, uh, I want to thank uh, MS and I want to thank Victoria for the initiative actually they're bringing in the Echo University. Eco University is a new thing to me, and I think it's actually really going to impact in my life and impact also in other people's lives. So I really, really appreciate you, Manesh, and the team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jean-Paul. Jean-Paul, I think.
think uh, we need to close the session, but I hope everyone can come on Sunday. I promise you, you will all leave Sunday with an Ecoversity project being born and launched into the world. So hope to see you all on Sunday. Thank you again and have a beautiful morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Um, bye bye, everyone. Make bye, your own Ecoversity. Bye bye. <laughs> thank, bye, thank you. Bye. Uh, <laughs> before you all go just rub your hands again and let's all give each other flying kisses <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. bye bye thank bye. you bye 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 <laughs>